Hey love, so welcome or welcome back to my channel. It is Ketasar and today I wanted to do a quick video on five shadow work prompts for beginners. So if you're new to my shadow work series, I have a few videos I'll link up here that gives you more context as to why we do shadow work, the benefits of it, and some first steps to get started. This video will be mainly just prompts that you can use to actively start the shadow work process. So before I get into these prompts, I just want to quickly say that it's important. This is key. It is very important that as you're addressing shadow work that you have a reframing technique in your mind. I don't want you guys to just dive into your past and your pain and your traumas without having like the mental frameworks to be able to reprocess these things properly. Because part of shadow work is processing that which never got fully processed. It got, you know, stuffed down, suppressed, and it wasn't able to be felt through and understood. But if we're still not able to understand it, that's when help from a therapist or a mentor or trusted guide could come in. But a good way to start with reframing is understanding that anything and everything that you've experienced, none of it defines you. None of it can take away who you truly are. Then that brings us to ask, okay, who are we? The truth of who you are is you are divine. You are light, you are love. And you have to start to believe these things about yourself because that purity exists within us all like imagine a child a child didn't do anything to deserve any of the bad things that happen they are pure they are good they are worthy of all good things in their life right so that still exists within you so as you're going and you know facing these things that you might have suppressed you must and i emphasize this you must remind yourself that this is just something i experienced this is not me this does not define me and this doesn't take away from my inherent worth and my worthiness to experience love and good things in life. Like literally like you're untouchable, it can't touch you. So the first prompt would be, what is a survival trait that you develop that no longer serves you? A lot of us developed coping mechanisms to adapt to our environments that might have been painful, uncomfortable, traumatizing whatever it may be an example of this could be you developed a hardened shell where you don't let anyone come in you're really rough and really tough because in some of your past environments that's how you had to be but maybe it's not serving you anymore because you want to be open to you know intimacy and friendships platonically and romantic and being close with your friends and family, but you just can't because you still have that survival trait. Another might be you're always agreeing, like you're a yes man. You're like a, basically a people pleaser. You're always saying yes. You're never honoring your own authentic personality or opinions or voice. You're just agreeing so that you don't create any tension. That may have worked for you in the past, but it might not anymore, or it shouldn't anymore because eventually we want to fully embody who we truly are and learn how to be ourselves in all types of environments. So you really wanna just get down to, okay, why did I develop this? What type of situations did I find myself in? And you know, how can I begin to show up authentically now? The second prompt is, what is a part of you that you hide from others and why? why is really important so you can begin to understand it what is an aspect of your personality or your essence or just your uniqueness that you feel uncomfortable to show around others that could be that you feel you're really sensitive but you try to come off as like chill when you're really not right it could be your sense of humor maybe you were teased for the way you laughed and now you don't laugh at the things you find funny because you were teased about it or your goofiness, your quirkiness, you know, your little weirdness about you. Maybe you were bullied for that when you were young and you don't show that either. So what is something about you that you hide from others and why? And then start to get down to how you can flip the script 
reclaim that aspect of you and reintegrate it into who you are and how you show up. The third prompt is identify a relationship, uh, ideally a familiar relationship that has a strain and why. So maybe you have a sibling or a parent that y'all just have always butt heads and maybe deep down inside it really is causing you pain even though on the surface you're like, oh, I don't care, you know, like whatever. You want to get down to the strain and what caused the strain in the first place. Nine times out of ten, even if you think you don't care about that relationship, even if it's an ex, like an ex romantic partner, or if it's a family member, a parent, sibling who's hurt you, nine times out of ten, I would say ten times out of ten, it makes you feel a type of way. If you don't care, that's probably you being numb and suppressing how you truly feel because it hurts, right? So reassess that because our relationships say a lot about us. They bring out a lot of emotions. And if you have suppressed that emotion, that becomes a part of your shadow. And you want to reintegrate that by processing it, understanding why the rift happened, how what role you may or may not have played in it because i mean like if you were a little child right and your parent didn't meet your needs then of course that's not you playing a role in it but maybe if there was an ex-partner maybe there was two sides of the coin you know so getting down to the root of what caused strain in a relationship that's important to you that had a big impact in your life even if it were in the past that's really important to beginning to surface these emotions that we've suppressed within about others. And the thing about these relationships is when they go south, a lot of times it causes us to create worldviews, like generalize everybody in that demographic and say, this is how relationships like X happen, right? So processing these things are really important to not only releasing these suppressed emotions, but also learning how to fix them if you're in a position to or attract new relationships that no longer perpetuate those cycles. The fourth prompt is what is something your inner child needed but didn't receive? So this could be positive praise, affirmations, validation, attention, etc. And then ask yourself, how can I begin to give this to myself? This is like so beneficial and crucial in the healing process of healing that inner child and beginning to be able to fulfill yourself from within because our inner child wasn't able to meet these needs. They were relying on the caregiver or whoever else to. But now as adults, we can look back on that and be like, okay, yep, this was not met this caused this pain for me that's 100 percent valid now what can i do about it okay so we're identifying a need that wasn't met ask yourself how that made you feel get down to that emotion let yourself experience it breathe through it but don't identify with it right it doesn't define you and then begin to develop ways that you can give that to yourself. And number five was really closely related, but a little different. How did you get your needs met as a child and how does that affect you today? So this kind of goes into anxious and avoidant attachment a little bit. Are you over-reliant on people now? Are you under-reliant? And that can tell you whether or not as a child you felt as though your caregivers were reliable you know if, if they made you feel secure you won't be overly anxious or avoidant so how did you get your needs met as a child was it through your caregiver giving you that supportive nurturing love was it through you having to literally sh explode and, and amplify your emotions just to get a little attention or did you have to be super you know in your own shell and then that's how you met your own needs by yourself without relying on anybody. So now you can ask yourself, okay, how did I do it back then? How did I get my needs met as a child? And how's that affecting me now? So what we really wanna do is begin to neutralize any end of the spectrum. If we're over-reliant on people and needy and anxious, that means 
we feel there's a certain amount of lack within because there was something we didn't get met and we still are acting from that place of a lack of our needs getting met. So you want to identify, okay, what needs do I feel aren't getting met? Is it attention? Is it positive praise? Is it just love? Is it support? Is it being able to feel my emotions and feel validated, you know? Or you might be on the other end of the spectrum, like I don't need nobody for nothing. I'm good. Like I don't need to reach out. I don't need to call nobody, nothing. But you know, we want to have a healthy amount of ability to self-regulate, but also co-regulate because we're social beings. So just harmonizing the two ends of the spectrum, understanding how you can begin to meet your needs and neutralize yourself into a more secure place. So those are five prompts with little explanations of each one. If you want me to go into depth into any of these prompts, just let me know, comment down below, and I'll be happy to. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe though, y'all. Join the family because I got a lot more good videos coming up. So I'll see you guys later. Until next time, peace and love. Thank you.